played 222 games for three clubs, Carlton, North Melbourne and the Melbourne Football Club. Originally from the Tasmanian club of Campbelltown, he went on to become one of the most flamboyant personalities in the history of the game. He played in Carlton Premiership sides in 68 and 70 and of course with North Melbourne in 75 and 77. So at the moment he has been fighting a debilitating disease called Miniere's disease but of course we remember him and know him well as the Tiger. Let's hear it for Brent Croswell. <laughs> Brent, welcome to the footy show. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Uh, just first of all, many years disease. And it's, it's a disease that uh, uh, the uh, major symptoms are vertigo and things like that, I believe. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, um, it's uh, a disorder of the inner ear that, um, which tends to make the world rotate. Um, and you get symptoms like vertigo, tinnitus and... Um, loss of hearing, although I've not had loss of hearing, but uh, I suffer from the vertigo. Uh, I've got a kind of mild imbalance always, at least for the last seven years, and, um, and it makes me prone to vertigo attacks. Well, anyhow, uh, Brent, when we said uh, we were coming down here and you were going to be on the show, there's many thousands of people in Melbourne wanted to know how you were going, and uh, they'll be very uh, pleased to see you, and uh, will be uh, very gratified by that explanation of uh, how your health is. Getting on to football nice matters. Say. Pardon? Very nice of you to say that, actually. That's very nice of you. Did you get that... Um, I didn't know you could actually wear a piece of the Great Barrier Reef, but you'd get away with it, you? <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't like to think he's having a lend of us, would you? No. <laughs> uh, did you net that? Or, pardon? Did you net that or was on the rod? Did I net that? Yeah, it was on the rod. I, did I knit it or did I net it? Did you net it or was on the rod? Just chat amongst yourselves. We'll clear this up. <laughs> <laughs> I love the tie. It's very classy. Well, maybe I could give it to you, Brent. You have not wearing one. Well, I lost my dog collar the other way. I love that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. A good dog lead. Okay, it's like Morecambe and Wise, this <laughs> <laughs> Now, Brent, what I want to ask yes, you is... Yes, what do you want to ask me? I've got a feeling you climbed the mountain a fraction early. You played in a premiership mm -hmm. in your first year mm -hmm. and it all seemed to be a bit of an anti-climax after that. Is that right? I think that's right, Sam. I mean, I think I idealised the game, as, we all, as all youngsters do, but particularly youngsters born in the Midlands of Tasmania. And um, I just think it, it did come a bit easy and I, I did feel a loss of direction at the end, you know. So at the end? At the, at the end of 1968. And, um, oh, yeah there was that lo loss of momentum and I felt somewhat directionless. Well, what made you uh, continue? As Ed's read out these magnificent uh, statistics well, of yours. I didn't continue, you see, and all that. I mean, I continued in a rather half-hearted way, you see. That's why I got into trouble all the time. Yeah, and uh, Ron Barassi was a coach of yours. You used to play chess with him over the phone. That would have been uh, an interesting... It was one of the most boring experiences of my life. <laughs> 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 right I was going to say, uh, Morecambe and Wise over there. I'm tipping your Morecambe, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's Trev talking over there. Don't, he's not even going to bother looking at you, Trev. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, and uh, so then uh, you uh, moved on, and uh, was there with any great alacrity? I know you're a wordsmith, and you've written magnificent pieces for the age. Well, I know In fact, you're perhaps the last person that wrote means, a magnificent piece for the age. alacrity means briskness, but something like that. Yes, yeah. but go on. What are you saying? Well, you uh, moved... <laughs> You moved on then, and uh, yeah. with any alacrity, did you attack the rest of your football career or your rest of your life, in fact? <laughs> That's very funny, Sam. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you're really going to amuse me before this evening's out, aren't you? <laughs> but, uh, no, I, um, I, I, um, I really didn't apply myself because I, I was half-hearted about it. I wanted mm. to move on and do other things, you see. But one thing you used to do, Brent, mm -hmm. is just to freshen up for finals time, you always used to snot someone about mid-year so you could have about an eight-week holiday just to loosen you up before the finals That's came right. in. It's funny, you, you know, I always thought of you as a clean player. And uh, it, um, 
but it, uh, I always, actually I didn't really think of you as a clean player at all. You used to, <laughs> you used to worry me, Sam, because you used to raise your knee. You had a high, uh, you know, ability to raise your knee. And in fact, I called you Dialysis Newman. I, I, um, <laughs> I just felt that you were, you were, uh, you always aimed your knee at my, my kidneys and most of my, most of my, most of my vital organs from the, the navel down. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I never got, I never got in front of you. I never got in front of you. And uh, what vitals organ they've t vital organs they've turned out to be, Brent. Those, uh, <laughs> you've uh, had a fair run in your time, I'll give you the tip. <laughs> I've seen you in action, Brent, and it's Look, something to, to behold. Look, I want to say this. That's very nice of you to say that. And, um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a man of some discernment, Sam. You know. <laughs> and... <laughs> Brent, uh, when, when you played and we saw you bursting into packs and the arms going and the chesting and all the rest of it, was a fair amount of that bluff to the opposition? It was a bit of bluff, but um, I just felt that that was something I had to, had to do because the club liked it that way. I mean, they wanted someone to be aggressive and... Uh, and so I, I, play, I did that. Now, whether there was some intrinsic part of me that was uh, inclined to do that or whether I was just conforming to what the club wanted, I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, I used to do that, and, and of course it is a bit of a bluff, but at the back of the bluff you've got to be able to finish it off, and I was quite prepared. Although I wasn't, I mentioned this in the paper, I've written about it, I was never a courageous player. But I was someone who was prepared, if, uh, if pushed, to, to go on with it, you know. But I think is... you, had to, had to feel, you had to do that, you had to yeah. be able to do that. No, but that is courage in itself, Brent, without I'm not actually no, I'm not pumping you up too much. I won't have you say I've got courage, because I haven't got courage. I was tough, but I didn't have one bit of courage. I make a distinction, <laughs> you see. Well, Justin, you've got an interesting story have, from yes, Carlton. Yes, Tiger. Um, I was coached under Robert Walls for a long time, and Robert Walls tells one particular story one day that when you're at Carlton, you were very late for a game at Western Oval, I believe, and you arrived about half an hour late for the team meeting. You settled in all right, though, and then they turned the news on later that night, and here were you with the long hair and the beard at a picket line at a protest outside the Commission housing in Brooklyn somewhere, yeah. just down the side of Footscray. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't do that, but... Uh, <laughs> but it's interesting in the sense that, I mean, your reputations are made by the conversations of others. I mean, it's, uh, you know, your wit's made by the conversations of others. And um, you really don't do the things that people say you do, or like most of the things, and also you're not as funny as people make out you are, so... Uh, no, I never did that, so that's, that's <laughs> no, I think you're doing a good job now. Brent, can I ask you uh, what it was like in the 77 grand final when you were moved from uh, the forward line to full back and you ran straight down the middle of the ground and mm. chested Peter Moore. It was the first televised grand final, 100,000 people at the MCG, and the whole place just erupted and North Melbourne came back from 27 points down at mm. three-quarter time to draw the game, as Trevor reminds me often, against Collingwood. Uh, mm. What was going through your mind at that stage? Was it just the, the sense of theatre or was no. it the, the... Well, uh, not really. I mean, I was exhausted. I didn't want to, didn't want to go down there, you see. I mean, and, and to be asked to go down from full to, you know, the full forward to full back was just too much. And, uh, and I, I didn't really want to do that. But uh, anyway, that was uh, that's something again. Now, I don't know if you take an interest in the football these days, uh, Brent. We've got some teams to read out. Uh... Two, of, two of Brent's old <laughs> teams, actually. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Can I just can I excuse myself? No. Do I just sit, sit here? Or... No, no, stay. Put stay with us, we'd like oh, your stay. comments so, on uh, how I'm, the game's going. And, I'm uh... really looking forward to that. All right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you've taken a keen interest in the game. I since... love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, uh, just before we go, uh, yeah. are you finding uh, with the mini airs disease now that you're, you're on top of it, or is it a constant battle for you? Am I on top of it? Yeah, is it? Is it something you can recover from or, or look, beat? Or? I mean, mo look, most of, t most of the time it's a, it runs a benign course and it's not a problem. And it's, it wasn't a problem for me. I've had it since '83. And. Um, Bit of alliteration there, Sam. Actually, um, but um, no, I, it, it's something I, I hope to get on top on a bit of eventually, Eddie. Seriously, and I think I can. And uh, you know, I just hope that uh, it comes right one day. You know. Well, as Sam said uh, when we introduced you there, everyone in the mainland who remember you as the great player and the uh, bon vivant around town as well, wish you all the best I and thank you nice very much for coming onto the show. Touching. <laughs> The great Tiger Crossroads.